So you're new to Power Apps and you wonder where in the heck should you store this new data that you want to generate? Well, in this video, we're going to answer that question and many more. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we'll discuss the pros and cons of each of the data sources and where you should store your data for Power Apps and future type of applications that you want to build. So to start with, I have a little whiteboard that I'm going to build up here, and it's going to show our data sources and the pros and cons of each of this. Now, in reality, a lot of this is going to depend on licensing. So on this whiteboard, I built a green line. That's our money wall. Anything below that green line, we have to pay additional for. Anything above the green line is included in your Office 365 subscription. So it's not free. You are paying for it with Office, but this is going to be part of your subscription, in this case, that you're already paying for today. So all of this is, of course, contingent on a lot of different factors, but let's start with the basics here, where your users are going to want to store their data. I'm going to start with a less scalable and kind of work our way up as we go from step to step. So the first place I find users are, that are new to Power Apps want to store their data is some users, man, they love them some Excel. So they may want to go ahead and put that data in Excel. Now the pro of this, of course, is the knowledge gap. There is no knowledge gap. So you know, really zero ramp up time from a knowledge gap side. You know, your users know how to build Excel. Most of, most of them know how to build Excel when they were in high school in many cases. The con here is, there is Excel is not a database. You want to treat like a Zen moment. Excel is not a database. Uh, it doesn't act like a database. So if you have 10 people all connected to the same Excel spreadsheet in a Power App, you start to get issues. We'll talk about what those issues might look like in a moment here. The other pro though is it is a free pro, is it is free. There's very little development that has to, has to happen. Uh, the cons are that, that that Excel spreadsheet must be inside of a table. So it has to be in an Excel table, and there can be zero formulas in there. So if I have any kind of formulas, it will cause, uh, at least at the time it's recording, uh, Power Apps to not be able to see that. Additionally, if we're looking at Power Apps here, we have scalability issues. All right, so you're gonna get some random errors occasionally because we have more than one or two people all connecting to the same spreadsheet. So largely speaking, avoid Excel as a data source for, for, for Power Apps at least uh, because it's not as scalable as you may want. If it's an app for yourself and yourself only, maybe okay, but largely try to avoid that if at all possible. The next data source that I definitely see your users will love is SharePoint, which has its pros and it has its cons. Uh, they're already used to using SharePoint today, so it's very little ramp up time. So it's easy for them to build, easy to build from a SharePoint list perspective. Uh, very low learning curve. It is, it is, again, it's free. It's already included in your office license. So from a data source side, this is a great data source. From a con side, SharePoint eh, is not a database also from a traditional sense also. We're going to have some scalability issues. There's going to be scalability issues at 5K, 5,000 records, and then more scalability issues at 20,000 records. While SharePoint can store up to 30 some odd million records, at 5,000 records, the list becomes more rigid. At 20,000 records, you have to bring the SharePoint list below 20,000, make your changes to the SharePoint list, and then you can go back up above 20,000. So you have at limits of 5K and 20K, as far as issue, uh, where you'll start to have issues. You're also gonna have some performance issues sometimes there as well, where you get number of users all hitting the same SharePoint list. When we all hit save, you might notice a good four or five second delay. The last issue is really around security. So for certain types of apps, which are very common in Power Apps, you'll have things like quest applications, where I'm requesting that uh, a salary change, or I'm requesting a material be sent off, or requesting a project be approved. On those type of applications, if I grant you access to my application, I have to also grant you access to the SharePoint list powering that application. And if you have access to that SharePoint list, if you can find that access to that SharePoint list, at that point, you can actually approve your own request. So that could become a, share, a, a little bit of a security issue or a big security issue for those type of applications. So if you're operating outside the honor system, 
to where, hey, I trust that you're not going to do this, then you may want to not consider SharePoint because of that reason. So I don't want to make, I want to make sure I cannot see your request and vice versa. Additionally, row level security and all those types of things, very difficult to do in SharePoint. Uh, so if you care about that, you're going to put that in the application. But if you care about, hey, can somebody see that underlying data and get to it, then that might be an issue for you. Okay, so think about that security as you're thinking about uh, rolling that out also. The next free option or included in your Office license is going to be Dataverse, our Power Apps, I'll put this, Dataverse, for Teams. This is included in your Teams license today, so if you have Teams, you have Power Apps for Teams also. The pro of this, of course, not, of course it's free, but it's going to feel a little bit like SharePoint for your SharePoint developers. So it's easy to build. It does have much better security. So it has things like row level security. It has uh, a bunch of different types of security models. It is, it can handle up, up to 1 million records in a given uh, table and up to two gigs of data in a given team. So you can create n number of these databases. These are, what it's actually using behind the scenes is Dataverse for Teams. So up to two gigs in size and up to a million records per table. That's, that's a, a pretty good pro. The other con, a con of this is going to be that, it, that, that uh, I have to access the application through Teams. So that's a pro and a con. Some people love that their applications are all inside of Teams. Some people hate that their applications are already within Teams. Only you know your business there from that perspective. Okay, so that's a pro and a con. One more thing that's, that's a pro of this as well that actually hurts you from a SharePoint perspective. So in SharePoint, if I wanna do things like contain searches, where I say, hey, I wanna search for RYA and get back Ryan so-and-so or Mr. Ryan so-and-so, where I'm searching for things that, that contain a certain word, that causes something called delegation in Power Apps, and it slows your applications down, and it also gives you the wrong answer. So for small data sets under 2,000 records, that might be fine. But as you cross 2,000 records and you want to do things like contain searches, it will give you issues inside of Power Apps. So if you feel like you're going to have something like that, then avoid that. That does not occur in Power Apps for Teams. Now we're crossing that paywall right now where the freemium model is now kicking in. And now I want to go ahead and license Power Apps to use one of the more premium data sources. So what should I use? I have over a million records. I have scalability concerns. I want to do a few different things like that. My favorite data source to start with is going to be Dataverse. We've already talked about the pros of Dataverse on top of this. It's easy to build. It's secure. It's the same Dataverse almost as what you get in Power Apps or Teams. Now there's no 1 million record limit now. Now there's a four terabyte limit on data for full Dataverse. The security is amazing. So if I want to do things like row level security to make sure that Brian can only access his own records or that Brian can access any records in his department, that's called business unit level security, it's very easy to do. We also have hierarchical security where Brian can access any data for his department or any departments underneath him. And then lastly, it has auditing built into it. The auditing is, makes it to where uh, if somebody changes a salary column, I can make sure I know who changed that salary column, what was the old value and what was the new value. That's built into Dataverse as well. And then lastly, one little extra bonus, you got tons of built-in plumbing. So who created the record? When was it last modified? Uh, you have things like attachments that are built into it. All that stuff comes over and it is a SQL Server database behind the scenes without all the rough, all the, the database developer requirements needed to make it work. On the con side, the con really comes down to a costing con. What I mean by that is if I will, uh, for every license of Power Apps that you license, it gives you up to 250 megs of data for space if you license it by user. Now, if you do that the, uh, and you run out of space, so eventually that space might be limited and run out, 
you have to license it by gig by month if you run out of space. And that cost can be a little costly. You'll find that on the Microsoft website. Uh, I want 20 prices right now because it does change on a, on a pretty frequent basis. So what I mean by cost here, it's included in your Power Apps uh, license. However, if you run out of that, you will have to license more. The next one on our chain is going to be the database of your choice, whether it's SQL Server, Oracle, or whatever your data source of choice might be. I'll put SQL Server here. In the cloud, it's super cheap to buy SQL Server in the cloud. So we can get it as low as $5 a month for some space. But if you want to go the, the more standard route for about $15 a month, you can get 250 gigs of space. All your backups are done. Your disaster recovery is done. Your data masking for, for hiding social security dresses. All that stuff is done automatically for you with, uh, with SQL Server. So the cost structure is very, very uh, inexpensive. From a con perspective, I need a database developer I, I, I probably for, to make this work. So I need somebody to build out my data model, which generally is a DBA or some kind of database developer, where Dataverse is geared at the, the, the uh, end users to be able to build out through a web page. I'll need some kind of database tooling that's free usually to build out these, and it might require some, some special skills around that. So things like indexing and all that. Both of these platforms are very, very quick. SQL Server being the fastest because I can dial the performance up or down based on, on my needs. So if, I, if I'm going to run a Super Bowl ad next year, uh, I can dial the knob up inside of Azure, get a whole bunch more performance for that one commercial, and then dial it down once I'm ready. So you pay for what you use in this case. So SQL Server is a great option if you have a database developer. Uh, and if you care about the performance, it's the fastest option for you in the cloud, where Dataverse gives you more features at a much, much lower cost threshold to develop those features. All right, so in this video, we showed you a number of data sources, five different data sources that you can use uh, for storing data when you're building out your Power App or your Power Automate workflow. If you care more about this, uh, please do subscribe. We'd love to have, uh, if you want more videos like this, and also, this is part of our training we do at PragmaticWorks. It's part of our boot camp in this case that you can find at PragmaticWorks.com. We also do things like virtual mentoring, where we can help you get unstuck if you are stuck, and hackathons where we build an application with you and teach you through your own application. Have a great day, and thanks for watching this video. Talk to you later.